know Steve Hardy's kept us waiting 25 minutes. You shouldn't let little things like that bother you. It's so bad for your heart problem. I have no heart problem, thank you. I'm sound as a dollar. <laughs> well, come to think of it, that's not very sound these days, is it? <laughs> well, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah? Oh. Well, I happen to know you're not fine. When I ask how you are, I expect a proper answer. What do you mean you happen to know I'm not fine? Well, I'm not living in ignorance. I mean, you told us yourself that you had a complete physical examination. Any fool can see that something is disturbing you. Nothing, believe me. Mm -hmm. Well, Monica thinks differently. She's genuinely concerned about you. I doubt that very much. And to answer your question, yes, sir, I did have a slight problem. Did have a slight problem. Well, I can make an educated guess as to what it was. Trouble in paradise. Am I right? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, Alan. Don't play games with your father. I can see right through you. I mean that uh, you and that little woman you're living with aren't exactly uh, breaking all records in the uh, bedroom, are you? You really do surprise me sometimes. You know that? Um... Let's just say that Susan is somewhat less than exciting to me these days, OK? She no longer turns you on, right? That's close enough. Well, you know, it happens to the best of us. The trick is to know uh, what to do about it. And you're about to prescribe, are you, Doctor? Well, I'm about to tell you that any man needs an occasional diversion to put a little bit of uh, zest back in his life. For years now, Lord knows I've taken little side trips away from your mother, and I consider that to be an absolute necessity. Oh, I see. So infidelity's a necessity. Well, well, how else do you think I've kept my spark? Not to mention my cheerful disposition. No, no. If you aren't getting along with Susan, I uh, find yourself a mistress. Father, Susan is my mistress. No, I don't care what she is. If you no longer find her a challenge, find someone who is. That works every single time. You know, I've heard of fatherly advice in my time, but this is ridiculous. Well, I have only your best interests at heart. You never found uh, Monica to be dull, did you? Monica and I had a totally different gamut of problems. I'm sure you know that. I mean behind the locked doors of your bedroom. We fought like cats and dogs. Oh, yes, yes, I'm very well aware of that. But, uh... You know, what you don't seem to realize is there's a very fine line between fighting and down-to-earth passion. Ah, uh, even I could see that uh, when you and Monica were at each other's throats, you both were enjoying it. What's more, you found it exciting, didn't you? I never realized you were such an expert on these matters. Well, just think back on it when you were slugging it out toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I remember it vividly. Good. Well, ask yourself, wasn't it more stimulating than your current nights? My current nights? Yeah, in your little vine-covered cottage with little Miss Muffet. Oh, <laughs> good Lord, Alan. I don't know how you stand it. A woman like that would bore me to tears. Unless I'm sadly mistaken. You find her a bore, too. Don't you? I don't know. Well, I can get him back for you. No, thanks very much, George. It won't be necessary. Alan! Where have you been all day? Around? Why? Did you get my note? Yeah, very cute. Just cute? Well, if you really want my criticism of it, it wasn't cute at all. Well, for heaven's sakes, where's your sense of humor? Don't you like elevator jokes? Not especially, Monica. That's the reason. That's why you've been avoiding me. You're embarrassed. About what? Well, our little encounter in an elevator. Oh, don't flatter yourself. Now I understand. You postponed the hearing for our divorce. My lawyer called me this morning to tell me that. Our little encounter in the elevator had absolutely nothing to do with that. It was the fact that my attorney he needs more time to do it. That's all. Sure. Excuse me, I have an elevator to catch. You want company? No, I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Hello, this is uh, Dr. Quartermain. Okay, go ahead. You connect me. Hello? 
Ella? Oh, sorry. Wrong. Want to guess again? I'm sorry. Uh, the operator was supposed to connect me with Ellen Quartermain. No, you happen to be connected to Monica Quartermain. I don't understand how this happened. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, listen, if I had the time, I would explain it to you, but let's just put it this way. There are two Dr. Quartermains in this hospital, and there is one that doesn't really care to talk to you. Alan! Telephone. Oh. I'm so awfully sorry. The phone dropped. Excuse me. Uh, just well, a second. Is that a call for me? Yes, it's your housekeeper. Housemate. Hello, Susan. I hope I haven't caused you any trouble. Nonsense. You're a perfect angel. Oh, well, nice to hear you're in such a good mood. Well, I'm in a great mood, actually. Well, good. Does that mean you're going to be home in time for dinner? I'll, I'll do better than that. I, I'm going to be home. I'm going to be home early. Well, terrific. Come as early as you can, all right? I have a wonderful surprise for you. Really? I can't wait. Goodbye, darling. I kind of like you're in a hurry to get home. What's it to you? Amazing. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I thought that place was, that little cottage, sort of boring. Not that it's any of your business, Monica, but that cottage happens to be perfectly charming. And that's good, and I'm glad you like it. I mean, for heaven's sake, you might be spending the rest of your life there. What is that supposed to mean? Oh, uh, well, for one, I have put the mansion back on the market, and I have instructed the agent to screen every prospective buyer very carefully. So there won't be any more little tricks. Got it? Monica, there's no problem there, because I really doubt very much whether you're going to find anyone who's going to give you your asking price. You see, the one problem that you always had, Monica, is you always ask too much. Well, we certainly can't say the same for you, can we? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh -huh. 